All right, guys. So first, hi. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the... It, you're probably your first time here on this channel. There's like four people that watch me. But other than that, uh, what's going on? It's been brought to my attention that I... Uh, I don't educate in my videos and a lot of people that watch me don't actually know anything about fishing so I'm gonna go ahead and answer one of the questions um, how does this fly rod work so I got the windscreen on I hope that's helping out a lot so in a conventional rod you have a lure you know and this that's the one you used to see you know you used to see bait casters and spinning rods and they put they typically have the weight on the lure itself and whenever you're casting it it's one strong swing and the weight of that lure gets it way out there but on a fly rod like I use the fly, the lure, doesn't weigh almost anything at all. And so the way you cast that is the weight is in the fly line itself. So you see all that yellow? The yellow is a weighted line. And then at the tip of that weighted line, you've got about seven feet of normal fishing line that you would, I'm just breaking it down very easy. <laughs> and that weighted fishing line kind of floats, at least the one I have does. So the reason why you see me casting it a bunch of times is because I'm building momentum in my swing in order to get that fly where I want it to go. Because you can't just one time swing it, it'll go right there. You gotta build that momentum because it weighs nothing. And so you're gonna see me cast, you know, one, two, three, four, five, you know, times, because I'm not that good, so it takes me a little longer than most people to get that fly where I want it to go, and then it'll fall on the water. And the fly fishing is all about creating subtle presentations. You know, you're not gonna get a huge splash, you know? It's just that, put that little fly on the water and just let it act like a fly. And that's, uh, that's appealing to a fish. Super small. It's just a different way to catch the same fish. That's all it is. So, uh, gotta breathe. I have this problem when I talk to the camera. I never breathe. I do it like all in one breath. Because yeah. I just get like super excited or nervous. I can't figure out the difference. I'm the same way. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> <laughs> so that's fly fishing. That's predominantly what I do. And then this is my buddy Tyler. We met randomly at a, at a creek one day. And he does Tenkara. I've never seen this. He's the only person I know or I've ever met that does this. So today he's going to show me a little bit about it. And uh, I'm also going to try to wade in shorts in a snake infested water. Which means this video might not get posted because I might be dead. Sorry, mom. All right. I will put you on my chest and let's go. Oh, shit. Whoa! That's a record! What? Get out of here! No way! <coughs> oh my god, y'all! Oh shit! level line as well as the uh, nylon line similar to monofilament and uh, fluorocarbon there is uh, what's known called line memory I just took it off the spool you'll see what I mean it's gonna be kind of twisty here in a second yeah so it's, you got those bends in it it's mm -hmm. not perfectly straight all you do to do that is come down to where you have your tip it tied on to your main line yeah and it's just tied on with the mate with the one knot which is just pretty much a basic uh slide knot just give it a slight stretch you'll feel it stretch out and flat straight you do that all down the line before you connect it to your rod and then to connect it to the rod as you can see is this is the one knot again it cinches down and then you just pull on this part to open that loop up more. So then you pull your tip out of the rod before you extend it. And all you do, very simple, put it through. You can cinch it down like that. What I like to do for a little extra security is send it through one more time. So you see it kind of wraps in there twice. Yeah. And then just pull the line tight then you're good to go ahead and extend your rod out and you never want to pull two segments out at one time because if you do that you're going to lock this in right here at this part and it's just going to be a heck you're going to have a heck of a time uh getting it to collapse fully back down so it's best just to go one 
segment at a time when extending them out. One, come down, grab below the joint, bring out, grab this joint, pull it up, and we got one more, or I'm sorry, two more. And we're full, and we're at not quite full extension, but for this rod at what I'm gonna fish it at for right now, uh, we're calling this full extension. You want your main line to be roughly about the same length as your rod, and then anywhere from two to five feet of tippet is generally recommended. I like two to three foot myself. It's just more controllable. And this is what's called a uh, kabari. Uh, there's another name added in on there. Uh, I can't exactly remember the uh, Japanese word for it, but all that word typically means is reverse hackle because these hackles come forward rather than back. And all that's going to do is it's going to give like a fluff action as you slightly pop the tip of your rod a little bit. Guys, this is very similar to fly fishing. That's why I'm interested in it, because I'll, I'll do all kinds of fishing. Whoever I fish with, I normally fish their way. I'm going to do a little bit of Tsinkara fishing today, but most of the time today I'm going to stick to my fly rod, just because this is a new section. I've never been to this river before, but I'm going to let this man demonstrate Tsinkari. Is it cold? A little chilly. <laughs> with these guys pretty similar to a fly rod essentially even in even in the western europe this is how they originally fly fished before we added reels but the way you typically do it is you want about a 45 uh degree angle with your forearm i just like to tuck it my elbow right into my hip and then it's literally just flick of the wrist and very accurate you pick your point out and stop at a 45 and your fly gently comes down and lands on the water. Literally in Japanese, tenkata means from heaven. <laughs> oh, he had it too. <laughs> what are you paying attention to? Now it looked like on your, what is it, shibuki? What? The fly is called a shibuki? Kabari. Oh, kabari. Wow, I was way off. <laughs> Shibuki, I like that. I might, I might, <laughs> I might come up with a certain kabari and call it a shibuki. So it looked like the kabuki fly had like a 14 hook on it. Like, uh, I think this one is a size 14. Uh, there's, I've seen them go all the way to from a size 12, size 14, size mm -hmm. 8. There's, depending on what size of fish you're going for, there is a kab there is a kabari hook for. Uh, you you almost said kabuki. I did almost say kabuki. Uh, <laughs> I'm messing this man up. <laughs> you really got. I like that word. <laughs> All right, so typically when it comes to hook sizes, the bigger the number, the smaller the hook, okay? Now, when you're talking about flies, and I, I don't exactly know much about Tenkara flies at all, or if they're even called flies, but in a fly world, the, the bigger the hook, the bigger the number, the smaller the hook. So I predominantly fish between like 10 and 12 because I kind of want to go for the bigger prey. He's fishing a 14. The bass I caught just now, earlier today, was on a 16, believe it or not, 16 uh, inch little hook. Whenever you start dipping into like conventional fishing and everything like that, you're gonna hear aughts. And that's just a bigger form. It's like you break the zero plane and you go into like your positive numbers. So for a Texas rig, for instance, you normally fish a three aught or a four aught. And then for that, you would either do like a shaky head, which is a hook with a, a weight at the end of it that keeps it suspended in the air, or what's called an EWG hook, which is an extra wide gap. So just remember that if you're if you're trying to do conventional fishing, you want to go for a Texas rig, four out hooks are predominantly what you're going to use. Again, I'm new to fishing. This is just what I've learned so fast. So I may not have all the knowledge or even the right knowledge, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. I'm like 70% sure. And in high school, that's a passing grade. Typically, Tinkara fishing is like nymphing. You fish it on a drift for the most part. You, you pick a spot. You cast up, usually upstream, and you just let it drift on by. Now I'm gonna do a quick demonstration on what's called a, a slingshot cast or a bow and arrow cast. It's for usually typical, like if you're trying to get as close as you can, what you wanna do is grab your line, anywhere on the line is fine. Just like a bow and arrow. Okay. Just let it go out there and set down on the water. And because I'm trying to go for distance right now, I'm letting my line go ahead and sit in the water. Typically, you don't want to do that. You usually want your main line up out of the water. Uh, 
that way it just gives the fly more of a slightly more of a natural presentation but because they're a little bit further over that way i don't really want to get too much closer to the wall without spooking them all we do is just extend out to that one and i'm actually going to go ahead and go to the 10 foot six and you'll notice a difference in the way casting with an eight foot 10 inch line is uh oh wow so increasing distance for your cast is just increasing your rod length yeah pretty much or switching to a longer a longer line but i i don't personally recommend uh just going straight to a longer line because it's it's a little bit harder to cast a longer line than your rod length depending on how much longer it is gotcha might have some more i don't know if you, if, uh, you guys can see it on the camera but as with each little there we go oh come on what do we have here oh it's a good one that's Whatever. a good little fighter right Ooh, there really it's a bass <laughs> cool looks like a little largey i'll take a large mouth bass anytime anytime on a fly rod whether it be tankara or traditional yeah not a bad guy there a little fatty <laughs> Ooh, let's see that hook real quick. Might need to get the forceps. And the, a lot of the time, most kabaris are barbless. So you you really, I wish I would have gone into it as I as I hook set. But when you hook set with a Tankara rod, super simple. Let's go ahead and get him back before he gets too gassed. First, before I do this. That was actually the biggest bass I've put on this rod by the way uh pb let's go heck yeah man uh so whenever they first initially hit the fly and you either feel the tug or because the lines are high vis mostly orange mm -hmm. you see that uh, you see you'll see the line kind of bump or if you're fishing a drift it'll just stop so at least the tip of it will when you hook set it's quick and simple just with your wrist point the rod straight up to the sky that's all it takes and as the fish pulls away, go ahead and, you know, if you want to, go ahead and give him a little bit of leeway. If you want to fight him a little bit, let him tire out, which I do. But I'm going to go ahead and tell you this. If you do that, it's a more likelihood you're going to lose. The, the fish is going to spit the hook unless you have a barb on your on the hook. All right. Now I'm going to take my swing at Tenkara. Now, again, uh... I'm trying to do this video more educational based than me actually fishing. We're about to here in a second after I catch a catch a fish in the Takara. Uh, we're gonna start doing just traditional like we're gonna wade down the river, see what we can catch, explore the river. We're gonna have fun with it. But, dang! Look at that. As you can see, you just want to keep pressure on him the whole time. As I'm raising my hand, I don't want to just yank him out of the water, but just go ahead and like I'm letting him fight, letting him tire out, but I'm keeping pressure on my rod tip. Similar to how Cody said in a previous video, if they swim that way, pull your rod this way to keep that pressure. Let's see what we got here. What species of panfish are you? That looks like a red breast. We shall see once I get a better hand on him. Actually, I think that's a, that, that would be a green sunfish. That is a green sunfish. Going by the turquoise blue bar right here mm -hmm. and the one right there. Not a bad little fighter, though. Let me get some underwater footage on that release real quick. <laughs> okay, so again, like I was saying before, I was really interrupted by him catching a, a fish. <laughs> I'm just playing, I'm just playing, I'm just playing. Uh, I'm going to take a swing at it. No, I'm not going to edit this. I want you guys to see me uh, fail or succeed at my first time using the Takara. so unique. I'm doing my best not to get you hung up. I don't want to lose that fly. <laughs> You're good. I got more. Don't give me that kind of freedom. That's too much responsibility. <laughs> right. If you want to have the rod tip up a little bit more as up you work it slowly, more. just every now and then add a couple pops. 
Here in a sec, we'll add some of the floating powder onto it so it'll sit back on top. The sun is like bright. <laughs> On three bass. I scared them away because I freaked out. Because I'm still a new. He needs to wear himself out, dude. Come on. Hey, buddy. Ah. Oh, it is. This is like a. It's like the less, or the more you take off of a rod, the more complicated and technical it gets. That is a good one. Heck yeah, dude. Alrighty. Do you want to hold that for me real yeah, quick? Yeah, I got you. I appreciate it so much. He is thick. Oh, let me wipe that off. Yeah, that's a thick boy there. Alrighty, this right here. Maybe it's yellow. I Good think. God. He's my first Tinkara fish. And yeah. he is a red breast. Pretty good size one too. That's at least yeah. eight inches. That that right there is a chunky boy. Let's get a real good view in on him. You can tell it's a red breast because it's a long ear. Which means it's not a long ear. <laughs> That's it. All right, and they got really long fins right here. Mm -hmm. We learned this today by taking a class at Living Waters, so. Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's a chunky boy. Heck yeah. Ooh, he's in full spawn colors too. He looks like a tropical fish. Uh huh. Oh, he got himself good. There we go. Still lively. Oh man, yeah, that's a beautiful fish. Heck yeah, beautiful colors on him. Yeah, this rod kind of overpowers the small. Ooh, new species for the day. Hey. I think it was. It, it, it flared some colors at. Out. That's a right. that's a bluegill. Yeah, that would be a young bluegill. Man, that class like helped out a lot. Yeah. By the way, guys, we do release the fish. <laughs> as fast as we can. And if we are gonna hold them out of the water, we kind of dunk them back in the water to let them breathe a little bit before we pull them back out. So don't worry. And the camera, it looks like we hold them out for like an hour, but it's not like that. All right, so I switched over to my big boy, blah, 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 my big boy fly rod. Now this thing is a, it goes under the water. There's a little bead on it. Anytime you see a bead on the head of your fly, it's gonna sink into the water, which is what I want because right now it seems like they're pretty docile. They're very timid and they're not biting top water like I want them to, unless they're shallow. But I kind of want to go for the bigger species, so I'm fishing what they want. And it seems like what they want is something deeper. Now, I've never used this fly before. I've never caught anything on this fly before. I don't know much about it. When you play with fire. Ooh, new species of the day for the day. Heck yeah. Dude. Is it a quad? No, it is it a carp? A quad, it's, a... it's a shark. <laughs> Ooh, about to go under. You need some help? No, I'm good. Alright. Golly, I got some salad with this fish. 
Oh, sorry, buddy. Yeah, new species for the day. Hey. Oh, this is that super colorful one he was talking about. Uh, the red breast. No. Yeah, the long ear. And look how broad up and down the ear is. Yeah, it's a long mm -hmm. ear. Heck yeah, first long ear of the day. There it is. Yeah, you're right. That is a long ear sunfish. Pretty guy. We're learning it. We'll get better at the the species eventually. Oh, that would have been... Okay, so we did a lot of fishing off camera just to kind of... Honestly, just enjoy fishing for what it is. Uh, I do that a lot. There's a lot that y'all don't see just because I love fishing. But uh, I tore down my fry, fly rod. <laughs> but I tore down my fly rod. I'm actually going to main a Tinkara because where we're fishing, it's it's too small for even a fly rod. So uh, th this is... Wow. I mean, okay, here we go. I never thought I'd be doing this. I never thought I'd be fishing with literally just a stick and a string yeah. <laughs> like, and then like catching things too that's that's the part that blows my mind that, that's why i like uh tinkara so much and when i hunt that's why i like using a bow and arrow more it's like the more primitive it's the better like the more fun i have in, yeah in a way just because you're like man we have all this technology today that makes doing this so much easier but yet my big thing is i want to learn how to fish every possible way that you can fish yeah i've always wanted to kind of get into hand lines too i've always thought hand line fishing was really kind of cool i can't wait to fill that fight again dude like i'll be honest with you that's a big reason why i fish is oh, yeah, just the, tugs the, the fight, fight man like I'm, I'm big into that adrenaline rush that's why i'm always going after like the biggest thing i can oh, or yeah. like if i'm catching like something like this I, I really want to go as small as i can for my equipment but it is that fight. That's what it's about. Amazing how that guy that big is in this water, this shallow. Yeah. Oh, did you should see this other big old. Whoa. What? This like four inch creek? Yeah. Oh. Yo, the net rig. Ah, killing it. Yeah. <laughs> um. How tiny that guy is. You called that. <laughs> that's the funny part about that to me. Yeah, that's a leech on his fin. Did you see it move? Yeah. Yeah, he's got a leech on him. Alright, well, that was Tyler. And a uh, big thank you to Tyler for showing me Tinkara. That was no, really fun. No problem, buddy. Most of this video is actually him catching things because I caught two, I think. Maybe three. I think about three. On my I, don't know. I, think it was, I think it was about three. It was about three. Three to his 30. That's pretty fun. <laughs> now, he was slaying it today. That was that was impressive. And the bass, he was just like, oh, I'm going to get on a net rig. I don't know if I actually got that on camera or not because <laughs> I'm fighting with the heat. And right now I got like 4% battery, so we'll see what happens there. Either way, it's been fun. I think we're slowly getting a little bit better at this. But uh, yeah, stick around. I'll see you on the next one. Have fun, y'all.